voters don't like getting cheated and they don't like getting lied to. And that's what's happening right now. They're getting price gouged, um, getting overcharged at the grocery store, at the pump for so many goods and services. And then corporations are telling them, oh, it's a supply chain issue. Oh, it's not our fault. But the proof's in the pudding. About half of what we're seeing in corporate profit margins right now is coming from um, those those the boost to the bottom line. So about half of the inflationary effect is coming from corporate profit margins. And the other half is the added cost of input or the added cost of labor. And so I think Americans sense this. They're filling up at the pump and seeing prices go up and down. We have CEOs saying on earnings calls, CEOs of multinational global corporations saying on earnings calls things like, quote, a little bit of inflation is good huh. because it lets them raise their prices. And so I think consumers feel that and they're frustrated about it and they want to have some party. They want to have leaders who will be straight shooters about what's going on and have the courage to stand up to powerful corporate interests to fight back. And uh, I've had a lot of conversations like that out the doors in the last couple of days. I was out knocking today. Yeah, I mean, Katie Porter, obviously, uh, her and her whiteboard are devastating to, uh, you know, corporate, uh, you know, greed mongers, devastating. You know, I'm going to play a little bit of her committee hearing that she had the other day uh, where she was interviewing an economist. Uh, she He was under oath and she showed him a chart of corporate profits, the bottom line, and then broke out the cost of labor, the cost of raw goods that go into making their product, whatever it is, and then the bottom line profits. And 50% of the cost that you're paying, that's inflationary at the pump, is coming from their desire to make more profit and nothing else. According to this chart, what is the biggest driver of inflation during the pandemic? The blue is the, the dark blue is the recent period. It would be corporate profits. And what is that percentage? It is 54%, and that number does stay that level of high if you update that number to more recent numbers as well. Ah. So over half of the increased prices people are paying are coming from increases in corporate profits. Yes, the unit price index is reflected in corporate profits as opposed to other costs. Uh, what do your colleagues say uh, when you make these these points? It, it, do, do you make them in a way that it seems translatable uh, to the campaign arena? Uh, it, or, or do your colleagues use some of these points the way you describe them? Well, I certainly hope so, because, look, voters want to hear about it. They're going to the grocery store. I'm going to the grocery store. Me too. We're filling up our gas tanks. We're trying to, to purchase things. So it's on voters' minds, and you just need to tackle it straight up and have the courage to stand up to big corporations and tell the truth. They are cheating us, mm -hmm. and we're all paying the price. Our overall economy is paying the price. Nobody more so, by the way, than our seniors who are on fixed incomes and retirees, and that's who I was canvassing out today about one in four of the voters in my district is over the age of 65 and they want to see someone who will protect social security and medicare and stand up to corporations who are making it hard for them to take care of themselves in their later years yes and let me tell you something right here right now the republican party is not interested in helping you in your later years in your early years that's why i just showed you a, uh, a study that actually says that uh, in red states because of the policies in red states that have to do with the proliferation of guns that have to do with the pollution, with dumping, with coal ash, with uh, poisoning of your water, and also wages, low wages, uh, which all contribute to early death in younger people. You know, America has the youngest people, uh, we have the, the, the largest pool of young people dying earlier than of any other first world nation, which is why the Republicans want us to be a third world nation so that we don't get compared to first world rich nations anymore, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what their real reason is, except to say that they have policies that cause you to die earlier. So now we're looking at people who are making it to their later years, okay, people over the age of 65, 
and they're being squeezed as well. They're being, uh, you know, priced out of, uh, you know, being able to go play bingo once a week. They're being priced out of being able to fill their gas tanks up. They're being priced out of being able to eat more than one meal a day because they're on fixed incomes. And what's the Republican solution? Take away the Social Security altogether and uh, end Medicare or increase the eligibility age or decrease the amount of benefits or make people pay more out of their pocket. Here, here we have a president, just so you know. This is the very first time, and I know this because, you know, I, I take care of my mother. I am my mother's power of attorney. I am my mother's caregiver. I am my mother's uh, keeper, okay? I am. And for the very first time in forever, I, I, I don't even remember this happening since she's been 65, and you know she's 92 right now, so there's been a lot of years here, that every time they got a cost of living increase in the Social Security benefit in the check, they raised the cost of Medicare's premiums. So it was always a wash, right? So you might get more in Social Security, but Medicare costs more to buy into. Well, this is the first time that the cost of living increase is going to be about 8.7%. You can see it next year in January, okay? And the premium for Medicare has also come down because of this inflation that we're involved in here at the hands of the corporate gougers. That is costing everybody, everybody. So you would want to see people in charge that understand this relationship between working Americans, young Americans, senior Americans, and corporate gougers, and say, hey, look, we're looking at your profits over a period of time, and uh, we're seeing that you're either, you know, uh, doubling your your net income, and uh, that's resulting in a 58% increase in your profits that uh, we haven't seen in your profits over a period of five years. We've never seen a 58% increase in your profits. That is the case with um, some of the uh, oil and gas companies, Shell, which is not an American company, just so you know, it's Royal Dutch Shell, okay? So Shell Oil Company is gonna buy back $4 billion worth of its own shares so it can increase uh, you know, the payouts to uh, people who own shares, 15% because they just posted a gigantic, gigantic quarterly profit, okay? So this is an oil company, and so I wanted to do it w with, without uh, you know, people saying, you know, leave them alone, they're an American company. No, they're not an American company. Okay, so they are a UK company, and they posted a net income of $9.45 billion in the third quarter, which was double the $4.1 billion that it recorded a year ago. The profit on that was $30 billion, which is 58% more than they showed in profit for 2021. That's $11 billion a quarter they're making, okay? The EU, the European Union, looked at that and said, you know, they qualify for a windfall oil and gas profits tax, okay? Because... In the EU, they're trying to tame the out-of-control cost for oil and gas because it's winter time there, and people have to heat their homes. And uh, you know, and now uh, the UK is looking at doing it too. Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.